So the last uh, piece of this, what we're proposing, what Common Good is proposing, is very, very straightforward. And it's really easy to do, but it has to be done. Right? You run into all of the usual things that you do whenever you're trying to, to, to start something. You've got to get people to understand it, etc. So I will just describe the technique, the technology, so that you can see how it works. Um, it's entirely based on the internet. And the fact that the internet makes us all connected means that you can take out your smartphone, or the merchant can take out their smartphone, they can take a picture of the QR code on your on your card. So you get a card. Yeah, maybe pass that around. Yeah, pass it around. You get a card. It has a QR code on it. The merchant snaps the picture of with the with the app with the smartphone app that actually just takes the picture of the QR code, connects you to the account. They type in the amount of money. It can be integrated into their point of sale system. And you've just paid with common good. That means because of the cell phone, the QR code, and the internet, transaction costs are practically nothing. It costs what the server costs per month, right? And of course, the amount of computing power as you get more and more and more has to go up, but it never amounts to much. I mean, it's not even. It's not even fractions of a penny per transaction. So, uh, signing up for a common good account is based on certain uh, sort of very basic principles. You should be invited by somebody who knows you. Who got their Google account by virtue of an invitation? Does anyone remember? <laughs> okay, you got invited to get a Google account. After a while, Google didn't need to do that anymore. But they were trying to do something which is actually important. Make sure that they weren't that they were, that the people who were joining in the beginning didn't uh, game the system. Anyway. That's the idea. So somebody that you know and could reasonably trust, we quantify it. We say, would you trust this person to pay you back $250 if you lent it to them? Yeah, if I had $250, I would lend it to someone I felt confident would pay me back. <laughs> okay, good. But it's just the general idea. So now you sign up for a common good account which is just like signing up for a bank account. Why? Because we're a financial services business and we're regulated. And we have to comply with all of the crap. Which means you have to give us your social security number, we have to verify you, we have to verify you, we have to make sure, find out how long you've been in. It's just like opening a bank account. All those things that you have to fill in. And you connect your bank account to your common good account. You give us the, your bank account information. You can still do it if you don't have a bank account, that's fine. I'm sure some of you don't have bank accounts. Um, but, because uh, then you can go to a merchant and just exchange cash for, uh, for common good. But now that your account is connected to your bank account, you can tell the system, the common good system, how much money you want it to take out of your bank account and put in your common good account. And when your common good account goes down to, you know, that level, how much more to put in. So that the whole thing can be automated, right? There's no, I mean, you can change it anytime. You go online to your account and change it. You can even go online on your smartphone and change it and, and do whatever you need to do. Here's the magic. You put what you think of as your hard-earned dollars into your common good account, and it sits in the community's escrow account, and we issue the same amount of common good. Why? Because we agreed that that's what we were going to do. So when you sign up for your common good account, you've also signed the agreement. The agreement says two things, essentially. I won't gain the system, I'll use it as intended, and I'll pay attention. Those two things. So, the dollars sit in the community's escrow account. We issue common good 
which is what you trade with. So any store, any retail business, any other person, your yoga instructor or whoever, your uh, doctor or whoever's agreed to your dentist, whoever's agreed to sign up, um, you pay with common good and the common good circulates. So the important thing in order to make all of this really work is that there are economic circles. The grocery store where you buy your food has to be able to pay their employees with common good and their per suppliers with common good who can shop at the grocery store. <laughs> so if, you're <coughs> if, um, if there are plenty of places where you can spend common good on things that you're that are actually in demand that you actually want you know that you need then why wouldn't you if there aren't well you know then you just put a little bit of money in your common good account because after all here's the whole point once you're part of a com once you've signed up for common good you're part of a geographically located common good community and you decide what to issue common good for so one of the things you do when you sign up is you appoint a proxy. You choose somebody who, if you don't vote, will their vote will count for you too. So we can get 100% participation. You can change your proxy anytime you have to. You have to appoint an alternate so that we don't get a little circle where where it's not working. But um, and we have community meetings where we, anybody who wants to, who's a member of Common Good, they come together and they talk about how would we like our community to be, uh, how much of the escrow account can we allocate, because it's not being used to cash out. Right? If, you, if you can't spend your Common Good, if you have way more Common Good than you can spend, then you're going to have to cash them out. It's going to come back out of the escrow account, right? And then there's less in the escrow account. So we can sit together and we can say, how much of the escrow account can we safely spend? That's dollars. It can be spent anywhere, by law. This bill is legal tender for all debts, private and public and private. Huh. That's the point. The dollar is legal tender. You have to accept it. And, and, and debts can only be paid or, you know, the, the, the legal system will only back you up if you're using uh, the legal tender dollars in America, but and therefore the laws don't but, apply. When you... No, no, no. But we can decide what to issue common good for, and we could issue common good as long as we're confident that there's enough circulation. We can issue common good to incentivize. We can. We could say that there are a couple of charities that were particularly. Um, that we particularly want to support, right? So every transaction generates a donation to uh, these charities that were chosen on the basis of the proportion by which the community supported them, as an example, right? So the charity gets uh, a donation for every transaction which we're creating. It's not coming from anywhere. We're creating it. We're increasing the money supply. If we increase the money supply too much, right, there's way too much common good, then there won't be anything in the escrow account. In fact, we might spend down the whole, you know, cash out the whole escrow account, and then we're really screwed because now there's no dollars for people who really have to, to cash out. Ah, you mean if we're sovereign, we're going to have to manage the money supply? You betcha. So, in other words, we're going to have to be conscious of what's going on in our economy? Absolutely. We're going to have to make the decisions about uh, what's reasonable to do. So we provide on the website all the feedback that you need. So you can see how fast the system is growing, how many people there are, how many businesses there are, how many of the transactions are person to business or business to person like payroll or business to business like supplier, right? You can watch it all happen in real time. And how much is the escrow account relative to how much uh, common good is actually circulating? 
what rate at what rate is the escrow account growing or declining? What are we going to do? It's declining. So we put out the word. We need more businesses. We need more places to spend. So why aren't you talking to the businesses where you're shopping in dollars? And get them on board. And we could tell you all the all the um, people who were shopping at this common good place that's similar to that one, so let's let's get them on. Or you can ask the system to send them uh, an email or a letter, the one that, the business that you want. Um, there's many so you get a letter from Common Good that says these many customers of yours would like you to accept Common Good, which would generate money as the community has decided for this. And the business guy looks at this and he goes, what? <laughs> and it changes his mind. You mean every transaction that they make would benefit a charity? And I actually like that one. Why wouldn't I do it? If I have too much common good, I can cash them out. Why? Because we're smart and we're managing the whole thing properly. So that's the system that we've actually put in place. We're giving it to you. All you have to do is get the n enough businesses in wherever it is that you are. In Brooklyn. Some of you are from Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. Or <laughs> in Armenia. <laughs> or <laughs> wherever. And uh, the, the best way to do it, okay, I'm over. Yeah. The best way to do it <laughs> is to form a little group and uh, be the nucleus of the new common good community. And you have one in Greenfield and also where was the other one? And Arbor, we have one starting in Goshen, we have one hibernating in Southern Vermont, and I have one going on. that I'm just about to get going in New York. Thank you so much, John. I want to look into it. You have it here in place at this location, or it's a per location community sort of thing? Or? Greenfield, Massachusetts. So they're establishing in Goshen, New York, which is that far from here, but it's kind of like a small town, right? No, Goshen, Indiana. Goshen, Indiana. Okay. Oh, was that New, New London, Connecticut? New London, Connecticut. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Southern Vermont. And so now we're just having common good underground tunnels to get people just like in instant shoots to <laughs> those locations. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. This is the super underground highway. You have your progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the just point slow, is that. a little common good in, just zoom. Yeah, you're there yeah, like you, overnight, less. <laughs> yeah, if you want to do this um, and you <laughs> sign up 10 people in one retail business where, where those people actually shop, then you can apply for a grant, and uh, you can get paid to, to continue. We don't want to give people a grant. We don't want to give a grant to people who say they want to do it. We want to give a grant to people who've demonstrated that they can do it. Mm -hmm. So ten people in one business. How hard is that? Very. <laughs> He's up to 300 people in 30 businesses now, but it, yeah. took, it took how long in Greenfield to get to where you are now? Um, well, the, the, the spurt happened when we got, I mean, William had enough friends in Greenfield in relationship to the co-op so that the initial thing was pretty quick. It happened all at once in one meeting. Mm -hmm. But um, the the rise, you can see it on the graph, the actual rise happened when we got the app to a place where it could really work, and then it was a no-brainer. And of course, most of what happens is businesses say that most of the way that it grows is the business says to the customer, why don't you sign up for Common Good? 